I'm Eric Stackelbeck, and folks, if there's one thing that's been absolutely certain throughout history, it's this, empires rise and empires fall. Let's take it back over 3,000 years. Let's get biblical. The mighty Egyptian empire led by Pharaoh, the remains of its best soldiers lie somewhere on the floor of the Red Sea. The Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, gone. And the Greeks? Hey, Alexander the Great was dead by the time he was 32 years old and unlike someone else who died at the age of 33, roughly around that same time period, Alexander did not rise from his tomb, gone. Now Rome had a very long run, no doubt, but eventually the Roman Empire morphed into the Byzantine Empire and just like the others, it was gone. In the centuries to follow, we've had Ottoman sultans, Genghis Khan's hordes, Spanish armadas, Napoleon's grand army, Hitler's Reich, the Soviets, all powerful empires at one time, but here today, gone tomorrow. Just look at Britain. There was a time not too long ago when the sun never set on the British Empire. And now? Well, just last week, an Israeli government minister said that an alliance of the radical left and radical Islam has made London the most anti-Semitic city in the entire Western world. Folks, this is London, once a crown jewel of the West, a place where the gospel went forth now home to massive pro-Hamas rallies attended by hundreds of thousands of people. Winston Churchill is turning in his grave. Now the average shelf life of an empire seems to be around 200 years, give or take. That brings me to the United States. Our nation was born 248 years ago and we have been blessed more than any nation in the history of the world. There has never been a more powerful or prosperous nation than the United States in every way, militarily, economically, culturally. And yet, to whom much is given, much is required. America was founded by godly men who honored the Lord, honor God, and He will honor you. That's the real reason our nation has been used in such a mighty way in such a short period of time but we're on a very slippery slope. Let's be honest, the signs of decline are all around us. There's many reasons for that. When our political and cultural leaders tell us that little girls can be little boys and little boys can be little girls, we might have a problem. It's a troubled time for our country folks, no doubt, but there is one way that America can avoid the fate of the other great powers that I mentioned a minute ago and stay strong for years to come. And it's this, a collective turning back to the God who made us great in the first place. There's no other way. It's revival or bust. We are locked in a spiritual battle for the very soul of America. So yes, get out and vote and also get on your knees and pray for this nation. Can a Jesus revolution take hold here at this dire time? In a few minutes, we'll be joined by Pastor Greg Laurie, who's got some encouraging news on that front. There's great moves of God happening in California and other states right now that you'll want to hear about. But up first, I mentioned those pro-Hamas events in London here in America. On college campuses nationwide, we've seen similar rallies. How can we revive this nation if we lose an entire generation of young people? Thankfully, through his great work at PragerU, the one and only Dennis Prager is helping to take students nationwide from woke madness to patriotic Americans with an appreciation for the godly principles that have made this country what it is. Dennis, welcome to Stackelbeck tonight. When I think of the possibility of an American turnaround, I'm thinking, number one, about our public school system, the universities, the moral rot, quite frankly, that we've seen there developing over the years. Dennis, how important is it to turn our educational system around to get this country back on track? Oh, 
it's indispensable, but I just need to tell you, I have given up on our educational system. People should homeschool their children or find a Christian or Jewish school that is true to uh, Christianity or Judaism, because ha half the Jewish and half the Christian schools are as woke as public schools and charter schools are often even woke, and, uh, and certainly private schools. Uh, I have given up on them. I, I, if, you don't, uh, if you don't have to study science, technology, engineering, or math, you shouldn't go to college. College it ha has been a moral wasteland uh, all of my life, and I've lived a long life. Uh, uh, it, it is time for Americans to awaken to the fact that their children are made worse human beings in many, many instances by going to school. Uh, it's a tragedy. It's a, it hurts me. I'm an intellectual. I live by books and writing. I love the life of the mind, but there is no life of the mind at our elementary high schools and colleges in the United States of America and in most of the Western world. They are wastelands. They are taught that you can become a girl if you're a boy. Why would you keep your child in a school that lies to your child? Dennis, this is common sense. It's really stunning in 2024, times when common sense is not so common. So thank you for sharing that, number one. And number two, you are a scholar, you're a student of history. Judeo-Christian Western civilization, not perfect, but why is it so important for young people, and if they're homeschooled, to learn why this civilization is a cut above everything else we're seeing in the world right now? Communist China, anyone? That's right. Uh, the West is the best. I'm sorry. That's a fact. Uh, it is. It, 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 every society on Earth had slaves. Only the West abolished slavery. Okay. So, so what else do you need to know? Who who else produced equal rights for women on the face of the Earth? Who who else produced uh, uh, free elections, free press, independent judiciary, right rights for the accused? <laughs> I mean, people don't care about goodness. The left has contempt for the idea of the good, the beautiful, and, and, and the true, the, which is what animated American education uh, through most of our history. Dennis, and, we have, oh, go ahead. That, that, that's what matters. Yeah, hey, about 20 seconds left. I know you're a busy man, you gotta run, but real quick, your outlook for the rest of this year, tumultuous times in this election year? I don't have an outlook. I have a proposition. People have to fight for the country. Uh, if you, if, and if you don't fight, you can't complain. Uh, I, I, I know, I, my outlook is we, that I have to fight. My outlook is the outlook of the guy who stormed Normandy Beach. I have to fight. Did he think he would win and come out alive and with all his limbs? A lot of the guys were not sure they would. I don't know if we'll win. I do know that we have to fight. At, at least I gotcha. owe it to the guys at, at Normandy Beach. Amen. Dennis Prager, thank you so much. You are a fighter, my friend. We will see you back here soon, very soon, on Stackelbeck tonight. God bless. Dennis Prager, see you again soon. There's an old saying that as the dark gets darker, the light gets brighter. Hey, we've got major problems here in America, no doubt, but the good news is that God is showing up in people's lives in powerful ways every day. No one knows this better than Pastor Greg Laurie. He experienced personal revival in his life during the Jesus movement of the 1970s, and he's carrying that torch of revival into this next generation. He's a senior pastor of Harvest Christian Fellowship in California and founder of Harvest Crusades, and you might know his story from the hit film, Jesus Revolution. Pastor Greg, welcome. It is great to have you with us, and hey, Number one, a lot of times people think of California and they say, wow, California, it's gone. But I mentioned those stirrings of revival. You've been at the forefront of this over the past year. We've seen mass baptisms in Southern California. Tell us a little bit more about what's going on there in your neck of the woods and why it's so encouraging for all of us nationwide. Yeah, Eric, great to be with you. Thanks for inviting me on. Yes, California. I'm a native Californian. Uh, I love this state, and a lot of people have left our state. I think the biggest export of California today is Californians. Uh, but, you know, I've jokingly said someone needs to stay here and turn the lights off. But actually, I'm here to turn the light on. We're going to do a Harvest Crusade. You mentioned this earlier. 
at Angel Stadium on July 20th. This is our 35th year of doing this. And God is still working in the state of California. And I have not given up on it. So the last great spiritual awakening happened in California. And so we did this film called Jesus Revolution, which was retelling that story because it was our hope that the fame of revival would spread the flame of revival. In other words, by telling a, a revival story, we prayed that it would inspire others to have their own spiritual awakening. And so uh, a key element of this movie is the big baptism scenes that we used to do 50 years ago, but we recreated for the movie. Well, this really moved people. They wanted to get baptized in the same spot, which is actually called Pirate's Cove Beach uh, here in uh, California in Newport Beach. And so we said we're having a Jesus Revolution baptism. And, and Eric, it was insane because we baptized in one day 5,000 people. 20,000 people showed up. We baptized 5,000 people. It's the largest baptism in American history. And there's a definite cause and effect between the movie and this baptism. And I might add that another church had a baptism a few weeks, weeks earlier, and they connected it to the Jesus uh, movement as well. And they baptized 4,000. So think of how many people were just baptized in the state. So wow. there was one 85-year-old man that, had seen the movie and made a commitment to Christ and said, I want to be baptized in the same spot where this film was shot. So he made his way down, which is some very steep steps. And, and as they were, as we were baptizing him, his family said to one of our pastors, we never thought he would come to Christ. So listen, wow. God's still working in California. I know politically we have our problems big time, but spiritually things are looking pretty good. Yeah, and hey, Jesus Revolution, obviously a hit film, made over $50 million, a massive hit, now seen, by the way, across the world. Folks, you can stream it right now on streaming services. But this was a cultural phenomenon, I'd say, Pastor Greg. And how important is it yeah. to win the culture, I guess you would say? Look, I was talking to you off camera, took my family to see Jesus Revolution. We can reach people through these mediums, film, music, TV. I think of the shows in the hit TV series. How important is it yeah. to have that Christian presence in the culture to win over a younger generation? Very important, Eric. You know, our sort of a mission statement we have here at Harvest is we want to reach unexpected people in unexpected places with an unexpected message. Film is a powerful medium. And we can reach people that would many times not darken the doorway of a church. So the fact that this is streaming on Apple and Amazon and Netflix, in fact, it just opened up in Netflix in India. Uh, this is very exciting. And a person will sit down and sometimes watch a movie when they would not watch a sermon or come to a church service. I believe in all the above. Listen, I'm still a big uh, supporter of preaching. This is what I do every week and I've been doing it for 50 years. However, we want to use every medium we can. The power is in the gospel. So if we're telling a gospel story, uh, Jesus Revolution is effectively a testimony that we're telling a story of how I came to faith, how my wife came to the Lord, how others were impacted by the gospel, how an awakening happened. So these are just tools that we can use what are some of the warning signs? We talked before the break about the great signs of revival in California and beyond, the great strides that Jesus Revolution made on that front, but what are some of the warning signs you see in America right now? Yes. Well, the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against them. Certainly the enemy is coming in like a flood globally and in the United States of America. We see so many problems in our culture right now, the redefinition of what a man and a woman are, uh, the increase of violent crime in our streets, uh, the, the, the celebration of abortion on the part of so many, um, and then the global conflicts, the war in Ukraine, the horrific attack against innocent people and the nation of Israel, and now people celebrating uh, Hamas and, and this terrorist organization and giant uh, meetings around the world. Things are really upside down. We need a spiritual awakening. We're in a political cycle. Uh, every Christian should register and vote. We should vote 
vote biblically. I can't emphasize this enough. Having said that, we recognize the ultimate solution is the spiritual awakening. So let's think for a moment about the Jesus movement. It happened when it looked like America was coming apart. The war in Vietnam was raging. Our political leaders had been cut down before our very eyes. Martin Luther King, of course, preceded by John Kennedy, followed by Robert F. Kennedy, who was running for the presidency. Uh, the Watergate scandal, uh, riots in the streets back then, a lot of racial tension and so forth. And people were talking about revolution. God sent a revolution, not a political revolution, not a sexual revolution. He sent a Jesus revolution. And you know the funny thing, Eric, is that phrase, Jesus revolution, was coined by Time magazine. They looked at what was happening among the young people coming to faith in Christ, and they called it the Jesus revolution. So we need another one of those. The revival that preceded the Jesus revolution happened right after the stock market crashed. Sometimes it takes crisis. Sometimes it takes tragedy. Sometimes it takes a national event to wake Americans up to the real need for God. And maybe that's what will happen again this time. But we certainly are ripe for a spiritual awakening. And I fear if we don't have one, we're headed toward a certain judgment. Yeah, that was the last question, Pastor Greg. We've only got about 30 seconds left. We'll have you back here on Stacklebeck tonight very soon to talk at length about this. But 30 seconds, the consequences of no revival here in America? Yeah, the consequences are you're going to reap what you sow. You sow the wind, you'll reap the whirlwind. And our nation has Judeo-Christian roots. We need to turn back to the very God who has given us his blessing on our nation. And, and, uh, and we need to pray. Pray for a spiritual awakening and let it begin with each one of us individually. Pastor Greg Laurie, thank you so much, first of all, for joining us. Secondly, for all you're doing to spur on a revival in this nation. Jesus Revolution, Harvest Crusade, Harvest Christian Fellowship. Pastor Greg, God bless. We'll see you back here again very soon on Stacklebeck tonight.